Hey guys, I'm Versha, and I'm here to wax philosophical about Wonder Woman's wonderful wardrobe. In the movies, it's fierce and functional, equal parts Greek armor and comic book classic. But her costumes have been a flashpoint of controversy since the very beginning. And in the decades since her debut, there has been a ton of debate over Diana's duds. So on today's very special yellow spandex, we're gonna take a look at the ever-evolving politics of Wonder Woman's costume. We'll start just before the golden age of comics in 1925. That's when psychiatrist William Moulton Marston fell for one of his students, Olive Byrne. But Marston was already married. He and his wife Elizabeth welcomed Olive into their home and lived together as one family. But even though Marston and Olive had two children together, 1920s morality wouldn't allow her to wear a wedding ring. Instead, she wore a pair of heavy silver cuffs to symbolize their commitment. When Marston created Wonder Woman a few years later, he used Olive's jewelry as the inspiration for Diana's bulletproof bracers, or as they're technically known, her bracelets of submission. See, Marston was also obsessed with bondage. In the early comics, Wonder Woman is constantly getting tied up, shackled, and spanked, but it was all part of his own strange vision of feminism. She wears a burlesque outfit. Well, it's athletic. And silver bracelets. They deflect bullets. Suffragette literature was filled with images of chains and bondage, and early activists fought for the right to vote by chaining themselves to government buildings. This is all before Fifty Shades was cool, by the way, and is actually way cooler. Marston had this symbolism in mind when he created Diana. She was supposed to be an example of a woman's potential when she's not tied down. But society still had a problem with her wardrobe. In her first appearance, Wonder Woman wore a long, flowing, star-spangled skirt which gradually evolved into a fairly modest pair of shorts. They're a far cry from the straight up thongs that Diana would wear in the 90s, but a woman in shorts was still enough to cause a ruckus back in the 1940s. They're not reading anything constructive. They're reading stories devoted to adultery, to sexual perversion, to horror, to the most despicable of crimes. The National Organization for Decent Literature, which is apparently a real thing, put her comics on their list of publications disapproved for youth because, quote, Wonder Woman is not sufficiently dressed. Now this is no kind of a night for you to be flying around in that outfit of Mother. This was part of a larger moral panic that was sweeping the country, mostly thanks to psychiatrist Frederick Wortham and his book, The Seduction of the Innocent. It's total bullshit. He singled out Wonder Woman for giving girls the, quote, wrong ideas about their place in the world. If you want to raise a generation that is half stormtroopers and half cannon fodder with a dash of illiteracy, then comic books are good. No, seriously, f that guy. But DC caved and changed Wonder Woman from an action hero to a more traditional female role. How do you expect to get a husband flying around all the time? Is it about time you decide to stay in one spot for a change? So instead of being a badass Amazon warrior, Diana spent most of the 50s and 60s pining for her man while taking up odd jobs like fashion model and advice columnist. In 1968, Denny O'Neill and Mike Sikowski tried to modernize Diana during the Bronze Age. In his first three issues on the comic, O'Neill sent the Amazons away to another dimension, removed Diana's superpowers, and got rid of her costume, lasso, and bracelets. This new look Wonder Woman traveled the world as a kung fu super spy and ran a fashion boutique on Bleecker Street in her downtime. Instead of a costume, Diana Prince wore a white jumpsuit on the job, which was likely inspired by Emma Peel from The Avengers. Look, Denny O'Neill, he had good intentions. He was an early force for promoting social justice through comics, like in his legendary Green Lantern, Green Arrow series with Neil Adams. And his Wonder Woman was an honest attempt to make her more relevant for the era of women's liberation and the Equal Rights Amendment. O'Neill thought removing Diana's powers and costume would make her a more realistic role model for ordinary women. But even he admits that his reboot missed the mark. In 1972, writer Gloria Steinem was working with DC Comics' parent company to launch her groundbreaking feminist magazine, Ms. Also, like, I didn't know she worked with DC. That's so cool. She hated the idea of Wonder Woman as a mundane mortal and started a campaign to restore the character to her roots. Steinem argued that O'Neill's reboot went too far from the empowering figure that Diana was created to be. 
Without her costume, Wonder Woman was simply another mortal woman in a man's world, whose only defense was judo she learned from her male teacher, I Ching. Diana represents the Amazon warrior that's inside every woman. She's not a bad James Bond knockoff, she's literally a goddess. Steinem convinced the DC editors to return Diana's costume and powers, which she proudly announced in the debut issue of Ms. On the cover, Wonder Woman, larger than life and back in her classic costume. That more or less brings us to the modern age. Diana had a rough time in the 90s. In comics, it was an era of excess. The men were walking battle tanks and the women, well, they were objectified with huge breasts, tiny waists, and even tinier outfits. Diana was unfortunately no exception. Throughout the decade, her classic uniform kept on shrinking. It was even briefly replaced by a terrible new costume involving biker shorts and a black bikini. Like, I kind of like the idea of a goth Wonder Woman, but I don't think that's how I want her to look. But with the success of superhero movies in the 2000s, publishers finally began to realize that superheroes weren't just for adolescent boys. In recent years, women and girls have been buying comics in record numbers. As a result, there's been a new wave of discussion on costumes for female superheroes. Nice outfit. Those heels make it tough to walk. I don't know. Do they? And of course, Wonder Woman is at the heart of the controversy. Women in comic books were traditionally designed with the male reader in mind, but fans started wondering just how practical it was to fight crime in a bathing suit and high heels. So in 2010, artist Jim Lee gave Diana a drastically different costume. For starters, he got rid of the eagle design on her chest and the star-spangled pattern on her briefs. So naturally, Fox News wailed that Wonder Woman was losing her patriotism and succumbing to the secret globalist agenda. The other new addition? Pants. Not everybody was a fan, though, including Gloria Steinem. She said the new costume gives us the idea that only pants can be powerful. And hey, it's not like men haven't fought wars in dresses before. <laughs> Recently, the comics have started to use a costume resembling the one from the DCEU films, which brings us back to Gal Gadot's movie uniform. Yes, her armor is leaving a lot of vulnerable skin exposed. Yes, the ultimate Amazon warrior still has no time for pants. And yes, she is wearing heels. But to Patty Jenkins, it's all wish fulfillment. She said she wants her Wonder Woman to be hot as hell, fight badass, and look great at the same time. The same way men want Superman to have huge pecs and an impractically big body. I think the coolest opportunity with Wonder Woman is that she is the archetypal ideal of the greatest woman. Jenkins brought Wonder Woman to life as the hero she wanted her to be. And seeing as how the movie is officially the highest grossing superhero origin movie in history, she must have been onto something. As we now wait for Justice League, Wonder Woman 2, and the DCEU's Diana-focused future, it's kind of amazing to think how far women have come in comics and how much further there is still to go. Hey guys, I'm Versha. If you want to dive into Diana's live action looks, you can check out our video on Wonder Woman's development hell. And if you can't get enough of superhero costumes, check out the rest of our yellow spandex playlist. And as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd. Thanks for watching.